Hi everyone and welcome to another video from DisparRepair.com. In this video we'll show you some of the most common reasons for engine overheating. So if the temperature gauge constantly shows values above normal, this video may help. So stay tuned. DisparRepair.com be sure to visit us at our website despairrepair.com where you can find more useful car and driving tips. A low coolant level is one of the most common reasons for engine overheating and this is the first place you should look when the problem appears. Various reasons for this can be a loose cap on the coolant bottle, leaks on the coolant system, lack of maintenance, lack of regular checkups or else. Solving the problem is simple, just add some coolant. Make sure when doing so to keep the level between minimum and maximum. I would recommend making a checkup again after a couple of days have passed. If the coolant level is low again, you might have a bigger problem like a leak and should check it out as soon as possible. On the other hand, if the level is too high for some reason, this can also cause overheating and an excessive pressure buildup within the system. In this case, get some coolant out. You can use a coolant tester to do this. If you don't have any experience doing this, we've made a separate video on this topic. We'll leave a link so you can take a look. When mentioning coolant leaks, one of the most common causes are damaged coolant hoses. Over time, due to variations in temperature and constant pressure, the hoses get brittle and lose their elasticity which causes ruptures and small cracks to appear. This eventually leads to leaks and losing coolant which will cause overheating. If this is the cause, then best buy a new coolant hose and replace it. It's a pretty simple job provided you have good access to it. It would be good to inspect the hoses from time to time, perhaps once a year and when the engine is cold, to see that all of the hoses are still flexible and elastic. You'll notice this problem by a constant low level of coolant as well as minor or major leaks under the car or around the engine bay. When checking the hoses, take a look at the clamps too. Over time, they may loosen up or even break. Also, the hose under the clamp may shrink over time, especially on older cars causing the clamp to lose grip. Solving this problem is very simple. Either tighten the clamp or, if it's damaged, buy a new one of the same diameter and replace it. The thermostat is a valve within the coolant system which automatically reacts to the coolant temperature and regulates the flow of coolant. When the engine is cold, the thermostat prevents circulation, letting the engine heat up more rapidly. As the engine heats up, it lets more coolant to flow and thus regulates the temperature. So if the thermostat is faulty, especially if it gets stuck in the closed position where it blocks coolant flow, it will cause engine overheating. Know that it can also get stuck in the open position, but in this case the engine won't be able to reach working temperature. Bad thermostats are best recognized by rapid overheating just after the engine reaches working temperature. Also, the working temperature may be reached faster than usual. The solution to this problem is to replace the thermostat. On some cars it's an easy DIY job, while on some it's an ordeal due to accessibility issues. The coolant fan switch is an electrical switch that reacts to the temperature of the coolant. It activates the radiator fan once the coolant exceeds the working temperature. When the airflow through the radiator is weak, for instance in city driving, the fan has the main role in lowering the coolant temperature. Over time, mostly due to material fatigue, the thermal switch tends to malfunction, thus not activating the fan, which eventually leads to engine overheating. The solution is to replace the coolant fan switch, which is in most cases located on the radiator. A pretty simple job to do, provided that there are no accessibility issues. The old coolant switch is screwed out and a new one screwed in. With this reason, the overheating starts once the engine reaches working temperature. If the car is in standstill, it will quickly overheat. But when driving, it's not that noticeable as the temperature will fall due to the air circulation through the radiator. 
A problem with the coolant fan has almost the same symptoms as with the fan switch. If it doesn't work for some reason, the engine will quickly overheat, especially in standstill or during slow driving, when there's no natural airflow through the radiator. You'll easily recognize this problem by the lack of sound from the engine bay caused from the fan when it starts working. Besides this, there also might be a rumbling, grinding or screeching sound if, for instance, the fan motor bearing is bad. Reasons for a coolant fan problem can be a faulty fan motor, burnt out fuse, bad connection to the motor, bad relay, loose serpentine belt or else. In this case, best find the exact problem first before you start the repair. The car water pump has the purpose of keeping the coolant flowing through the engine. It's essentially an engine driven turbine. The most common water pump failures are caused by material fatigue, like the impeller fins being damaged, worn out or broken, or the pump bearings wearing down. Replacing the water pump is the best and probably only solution, especially with modern engines. On most modern cars, the water pump is replaced together with the timing belt. On some older cars, the pump can be replaced separately. Besides material fatigue, adding concentrated coolant directly into the system can cause leaks. In most cases, with water pump problems, there is a mild overheating at first, just above normal temperature values, but it progresses over time. As it does and the problem becomes alarming, leaks will probably also start to appear. The main purpose of a car radiator is to lower the coolant temperature using natural airflow while driving or with the help of the coolant fan. If it isn't efficient enough, the excess heat stays within the system and the engine starts to overheat. Problems with the radiator can be caused by cracks or punctures which result in leaks and loss of coolant. Clogs either inner or outer are also a common cause of problems. Solutions are various and depend on the problem and involve soldering, welding, radiator sealants or a complete replacement. When the radiator is a problem, especially when it's clogged, you'll notice a constant overheating no matter how you drive. The temperature value will always be above normal and borderline overheating. This is a rare problem that mostly happens on older cars but it's worth the mention. The heater core is a part of the coolant system and if it's damaged or clogged it influences the rest of the system. It's basically another small radiator only this one uses the excessive heat from the engine to heat up the passenger cabin. Just like with the engine radiator, problems are caused by material fatigue, clogs and else, although much less due to it being sheltered within the passenger cabin. This reason is noticed by mild overheating which gets worse over time. Once it does, it's usually accompanied with coolant leaks within the passenger cabin. Replacing it is the solution. It's pretty easy to do if you manage to get to it since it usually involves dismantling the whole dashboard, central console and else. This final reason is the worst case scenario and involves the most repair regarding both time and money. In this case the main gasket between the cylinder head and engine block is damaged. The most common reason for this is massive sudden overheating or constant overheating during a longer period of time. This reason is easily recognized by constant overheating. The car is drivable at the beginning of the problem, but it gets worse over time and the temperature gets higher and higher. Also, there may be a constant lack of coolant, although there aren't any leaks. As the problem gets worse, coolant and engine oil may start to mix, which you'll notice inside the coolant bottle. Solving the problem means replacing the gasket, which means taking off the cylinder head, which then may mean a partial engine overhaul. Not necessarily, but once it comes to this, lots of people decide to do it. So, I hope this video helps to find the reason for engine overheating. Find the reason and react as soon as possible. Most of these reasons aren't that hard or costly to solve. On the other hand, neglecting the problem will eventually lead to overheating and possible major engine damage. Also, a good preventive measure is to make regular checkups and notice the problem on time. 
Thanks for your time and thanks for watching.